Hey guys, it's Captain OCD back for episode 11 of Let's Play Diablo 2 Hardcore. Moving on through the River of Flame, heading to the Chaos Sanctuary, which is where Diablo lies. Uh, things get a little hairy here and have to head back to town. I've actually cut ahead a little bit from where I last left you guys. Um, it's mostly because I want to fit Diablo into this episode, but also because it's really more the same. Same enemies, same terrain, etc. Right, there's the River of Flame waypoint. Definitely want to tag that. Uh, this stretch of the River of Flame is great if you have Leap or Teleport because you can just hop across the platforms and the enemies will have trouble following you. Uh, these guys though will be able to keep up with you uh, because they fly. Their missile attacks also drain mana. They're just like the enemies that you ran into in the Arcane Sanctuary. Now I could skip through this area like I said with Leap, um, but I really need the experience and I'm not necessarily looking forward to fighting in the Chaos Sanctuary. And the reason for this is the Oblivion Knights there cast Iron Maiden, which is the bane of any physical based melee character. Uh, what it does is it'll return an amount of damage you deal to an enemy uh, multiplied several times. Uh, and usually this means instant death if it gets casted on you in the middle of a whirlwind or a zeal. Uh, it's completely crazy and it's being removed in the next patch thankfully. Um, but until then it's something you have to watch out for. That right there is Iron Maiden. As soon as you see those lines dancing above your head, stop attacking. Uh, it also makes a very distinct sound when it gets casted, so you can listen for that too. Here we have a run in with our old friend the lag monster. Uh, as usual, just save and exit. The Oblivion Knights here can cast several curses uh, besides Iron Maiden. Uh, the only noteworthy ones, I think, though, are Decrepify and Lower Resist. Uh, low resist does exactly what you think it does, lowers your resistances. Uh, the only reason this is worth looking out for though is because of the Mega Demon's fire breath. Uh, if your fire resistance isn't too great, or even if it's capped and you get caught surrounded by them and they all breathe on you while you have the curse up, you'll probably get fried pretty quick. Uh, Decrepify reduces the amount of damage you deal, increases the amount of damage you take, and it also slows you. So. That obviously can lead to a bad situation if you're not careful. Kind of like the situation I'm in right now. I have to head back to town to resurrect Raisin. Uh, if you ever end up attracting half the Chaos Sanctuary, like I just did, um, the best way to take care of it is to sort of bait the enemies out a little bit at a time. Uh, and these corners are really great for doing that. Uh, there's no way you'll be able to take out an entire group of enemies like that at this level, especially in melee. The curse above my head right now is Amplify Damage, and the curse above Raisin's head is Lower Resist. Uh, Decrepify looks exactly like Amplify Damage, except it's blue. So what we're trying to do right now is activate the six seals, which are located in pairs at each end of the Chaos Sanctuary. And for each pair, there's going to be a super unique monster. Two of them aren't really worth noting. The last one, however, can be potentially harder than Diablo. So it's important that you activate the seals in a specific order, that way you're fighting the hard one last. You want to start with the northwestern or the northeastern branch. I think this is the easiest branch to start with. This is pretty funny, a mega demon steps right in front of my town portal while I have Iron Maiden casted on me. If I was higher level, I probably could have died. <laughs> the super unique monster for this branch is the Grand Visor of Chaos, uh, and he'll spawn as soon as you touch this seal here. Uh, he's that blue finger mage there in the back. Uh, there's not really much to mention about him other than he's fire enchanted, so as usual, watch out when he dies. And he is fire immune, so if you're a sorceress who specked into fireball or something like that, um, let your mercenary take care of it. Uh, and there's Eisenhart's Breastplate. If you play Diablo 2, I'm sure you're familiar with it, and you've seen plenty of them, and you wish they would go away forever, and you would never have to see them ever again. Uh, if you didn't know, the, the probably the most common set item in the game, and everybody hates Ice and Hearts. <laughs> Alright, moving it along to the Northwestern branch. Uh, I misspoke before when I said there were six seals, there's only five seals, uh, and there's only one located on this branch. The super unique monster for this branch is Lord Desis. I could be pronouncing that wrong, I'm not sure. Um, not much to say about him other than that he has fanaticism aura and he spawns with a number of Doom Knights, which are the melee version of the Oblivion Knights. Fanaticism is one of those auras that you really have to look out for, especially in later difficulties when things can also spawn with extra fast. 
what it does is it increases their attack speed and damage, and combined with extra fast, they can roll up on you really quick and just burn you down. Alright, here apparently the seal does not want to activate. There we go. And there is Lord Decease. Uh, if you really wanted, you could just leap right over to him. He's that guy right there in the back. Or just walk. He goes down really easy. Alright, moving on to the southeastern branch, which is where the scary super unique monster is. Uh, he's called the Infector of Souls, and he's an extra fast mega demon. Uh, the problem here is that, like all the other super unique monsters, he spawns with a pack of minions, and in this case, more mega demons. Uh, mega demons move pretty fast as it is, and with extra fast, they move at lightning speed. This is a very difficult fight for some people. I'd really like to stress the fact that I don't have the video sped up right now. They are really moving that quickly. Uh, the trick to this fight is sort of to bait them out a little bit at a time. Uh, if you try to run in there and tackle them head on, they'll surround you and burn you down. Uh, kind of like that. Uh, poor Raisin doesn't know enough to run away. God, they move so quick. Um, the reason we're doing this last, though, is because if you destroy all the super unique monsters here and activate all the seals, Diablo will spawn and it'll kill any enemies who are left in the Chaos Sanctuary. So really all we have to do here is take out the Infector of Souls himself. We don't have to take on the entire pack. You just really have to be careful in this fight and capped fire resist is almost essential. Uh, you can attempt to bottleneck them here at this pentagram, but it's not too effective. The best way to take them on is definitely to have your hireling. Uh, and use him as a meat shield and just sort of whittle away at the pack uh, as best as you can before you can finally take out the Infector of Souls himself. Alright, as soon as he dies, Diablo will spawn. Uh, there's a lot to say about this fight. Uh, the most important, though, is the Red Lightning Hose. Um, it's an attack he uses that is sort of similar to the fire breath uh, of the Mega Demons. What it does is half lightning damage and half physical damage, and it does a ton of it. You need capped lightning resist. That's it right there. Um, if you stand in this long enough, even with capped lightning resist, you'll, you'll just go straight to the floor. Um, the best way to avoid it is not to run directly away from him, but to run in an arc like that. Positioning is also very important. You want your um, hireling in a way so that he's constantly doing damage but not getting tagged by the hose. And you want to uh, have Diablo paying attention to you. Expect to make frequent town runs for this fight. Uh, you're going to need a ton of potions and your hireling is going to die a lot. Diablo can sometimes cast a bone prison around your town portal too, so be careful. The other attack you want to look out for from Diablo is that firestorm that you see there. Uh, just like the red lightning hose, you don't want to be standing in it. It's not nearly as damaging though. Uh, here's an example of bad positioning. Don't stand in a place where you can't move side to side uh, when he's casting the lightning hose. The other attack that Diablo will use that you want to look out for is this ring of fire. I uh, can't really do anything to avoid it, uh, but uh, poor reason. Uh, but since act bosses deal ten times more damage to hirelings, uh, Raisin will really take a hurt from it. Uh, you want to be able to feed him a potion, uh, which you can do just by dropping it onto his portrait, or you can hold shift and hit one of your potion keys. If you picked up a weapon with crushing blow or open wounds, now's the time to use it. Uh, open wounds does spawn on the steel rune word, so if you did hang on to it, feel free to switch over to it. It'll probably do more damage in the long run. This is a very risky fight on hardcore. You want to make sure you have your hireling alive for it the whole time. You need his extra damage to take Diablo down as quickly as possible. The longer the fight goes on, the more likely you're going to end up getting caught with your pants down and be dead. Diablo will also use this uh, Frost Touch ability, which you can see him use right there. Uh, it'll slow you, so if you have any um, half freeze duration or if you have access to a cannot be frozen item, uh, it's definitely worth having on for this fight. Uh, because if he chills you and tags you with a lightning hose, you might not be able to run away quick enough uh, to survive. The key to this fight is the same as the virtue of hardcore. Patience. As long as you're safe and take your time and don't do anything stupid, you should be able to pull through it. Got him. I didn't drop anything really good, uh, but what's important is that we're done with this fight and we can move on to Act 5. 
Uh, that'll do it for episode 11 of Let's Play Diablo 2 Hardcore. If you have any questions or advice, uh, you can leave a comment below. Uh, next time, we'll be heading to Haragath to start Act 5. See you then.